hello guys i hope you all are doing good so today we will be starting with the another new topic that is the dental casting alloys so you can expect at least two to three question it is a very vast topic and it's a very important topic as well so you can expect two to three mcqs from this topic so starting with your dental casting alloys coming on to the application so basically these are used in all metal restorations it is used in the removable partial dentures and it is used in the metal ceramic or the porcelain fused to metal restoration that is pfm so basically what all are the objectives so to understand the alloy classification to know the role of each element in the dental casting alloys to know the requirements of the porcelain fused to metal or ceramic alloys to understand the relation between the tcoe of the pfm that is porcelain fused to metal alloys and that of your ceramics to recognize the importance of some properties of the alloys so starting with the history part first one is na in 1987 1907 dr william h dagrit gave the lost wax technique as i have already told you in the wax in waxes that it is the very important excuse it is always being asked as a question like lost wax technique is technique is given by so your answer will be dr william h dagrid next like dr dagrid is given what so your answer is lost wax wax technique in 1907 so basically this point is very very important from your exam point of view it comes in your basically in your waxes and in your casting alloys also so from 1932 to 1948 standardization of the dental casting alloys are given between 1950s to 1960 development of pfm alloys are introduced so founding that adding the palladium and the platinum to the gold would lower the coefficient of thermal expansion which sufficiently to ensure the physical compatibility between the porcelain veneer and the metal substructure in 1970s the payment of gold on the free market has begun which increased the prices stimulates the search for the alternate gold alloys and the base metal alloys remember in 1970 the placement of gold are available on the free market now coming on to certain terminologies which we are going to use starting with the noble metals what are noble metals these are the element with the good metallic surface that retain their luster in a clean or dry air it these are indicated the relative inertness of the element in relation to the standard electromagnetic field series they resist oxidation tarnish and corrosion during the heat casting and soldering these are the very important points 
Coming on to the platinum group, it contains six metals that is platinum, iridium, osmium with the atomic weight of 190 and the density of 22 gram per cubic centimeter. Next is your palladium, rhodium, ruthenium with the atomic weight of 100 and the density ranges from 11 to 12 gram per centimeter, uh, cubic centimeter. Now coming on to the gold, its atomic weight is 196 with a density of 19.3 gram per cubic centimeter. So the gold content of a dental alloy is you carry which is the part of the pure gold per 24 example the gold is available in your 18 carat and your 24 carat so finest parts of pure gold per thousand example a 650 fine alloy has a gold content of 65 percent so it is basic it is primarily used for the gold solders So there was an MCQ regarding the gold. So can you see this the fineness? So there was an MCQ in your AIMS exam and the MCQ was the purity of gold is expressed in. Most of you think that purity of gold expressed in the term of carrot. No, the answer is the fineness. I repeat the question the purity of gold is expressed in the answer is fineness okay now very important coming on to the classification the classification is according to AD specification number five principal elements AD specific AD classifications and descriptive classifications Coming on to the AD specification number 5. These are referred as the gold based alloys. According to AD specification, these are referred to a gold based alloys. Alloys can have any composition as long as they pass the test for toxicity, the tarnish yield strength and the percent elongation so before coming on to the types of your gold based alloy let me tell you one mcq which was being asked in your aims exam and the question was according to ada specification number five According to AD specification number 5, gold alloy used for casting contain at 75% your answer is 75% of precious metal. I repeat the MCQ. According to AD specification number 5, the gold alloy used for casting contains 75% of precious metal so coming on to the classification that the type of the gold type there are four type of gold base alloy according to their strength type 1 is the soft type 2 gold alloy is medium type 3 gold alloy are hard and type 4 gold alloy are very hard percent of gold and platinum in type 1 it has 83 percent and uh, type 2 is 78 percent and type 3 78 percent of your gold and platinum and in type 4 it has 75 percent of gold and platinum now coming on to the very important their uses type 1 it is used in your inlay you can see the small inlay type 2 
these are used in your inlay and outlay or you can say the third fourth of the crowns and the pontex type 3 gold based alloy that is hard these are used in the inlay only uh, sorry only crown and bridge full crowns or your short span bridges type 4 that is extra hard these are used in your crown and bridge in rpd or you can say your long span bridges clasp and the partial denture framework i hope this type uh, gold based alloys are clear to you coming on to the ADA classification according to AD classification in 1984 it is classified into three types that that is your high noble metal noble metal alloys and predominantly that is that are your base metal alloys yes alloy type high noble metal total noble metal contains more than 40 percent by weight of gold and more than 60 percent of the noble metal element noble metal contains more than or equal to 25 percent of uh, by 25 percent by weight yes noble metal contain more than or equal to 40 percent by weight or your noble metal contains more than or equal to 25 weight by percent of the noble metal element that is your gold your platinum uh, palladium and platinum base metal contains less than 25 percent of the weight of the noble metal elements so you have recently an MCQs on your AD according to your ADA classification of your noble uh, gold uh, alloy, gold alloys, and your MCQ was the noble metal alloys that is your gold, platinum, and palladium contains at least seventy five percent of noble metal content, while the base metal that is nickel, titanium cobalt and chromium contains less than 25% of noble metal so it is very important question coming on to the principal elements when an alloy is identified according to the elements it contains the components that are listed in decline declining the order of composition with the largest constituent first followed by the second largest constituent example gold silver platinum gold is 78 percent silver is 12 percent platinum is 10 percent exceptions Certain elements that significantly affect the physical properties or that represents the potential biocompatibility concerns are often designated regardless of their small amounts. Example, your gold, copper, silver, palladium, gold contain 40%, copper 7.5%, your silver 47%, your palladium 4%. So coming on to the de descriptive classification, it is divided into normal fusing alloys and high fusing alloys. Normal fusing alloys has medium, go, medium, low, sil your medium gold, your low gold, your silver palladium and your silver indium. Your high fusing alloy is mostly used for your porcelain fused to metal. These are gold, 
platinum or palladium gold platinum gold palladium silver gold palladium high palladium palladium silver base metals are chromium cobalt chromium or nickel coming on to the fundamental properties of the noble metals coming on to the gold which is very important though we have discussed the complete part of the gold in direct filling gold but still we are discussing it is very important topic so what is the basic property of gold it is soft most mostly you can say it is soft mostly malleable and ductile it has the property of malleability and ductility relatively low strength tarnish resistant in air and water at any temperature attacked by only few of the most powerful oxidizing agents insoluble in sulfuric nitric and hydrochloric acids soluble in a combination of nitric and sulfuric acids aqua regia small amounts of impurities that is lead mercury base metals have a pronounced and usually determined detrimental uh, detrimental effect on its properties so it is very important the fusing temperature is 1063 degree celsius density is 19.3 gram per centimeter cube thermal coefficient of expansion is 14.2 into 10 raised to power minus 6 per degree celsius and your mode of elasticity is modulus of elasticity is 80 giga pascal i hope this is clear it is very important so coming on to the next Uh, ingredient that is your platinum platinum is tough malleable and ductile same way as your gold but platinum has malleability and ductility same as that of coal but gold has gold is soft and platinum is tough so very high cost usually replaced by palladium in most modern alloys high corrosion resistance higher melting point than porcelain so fusion temperature is 1755 degree celsius density is 21.37 g per centimeter cube thermal coefficient of expansion is 8.9 into 10 raised to power minus 6 per degree celsius modulus of elasticity is 147 giga pascal it is these are your fusion your fusing temperature is more than gold density is more than gold your thermal coefficient of expansion is less than gold and your modulus of elasticity is more than gold coming on to the palladium these are not used in the pure state in dentistry has replaced platinum in dental casting alloys decrease cost versus helps pre- helps in prevent corrosion of silver in the oral environment this is decrease cost versus platinum so absorbs hydrogen gas when heated improperly very important so fusing temperature 1.55 degree celsius density 11.4 g per cm3 thermal coefficient of expansion is 11.1 into 10 raised to the power 6 minus 6 per degree celsius modulus of elasticity is 112 that is 112 giga pascal coming on to the silver noble 
is malleable and ductile best known conductor of heat and electricity very important point harder than gold obviously you all know gold is very soft unaltered in clean dry air however combines with the sulfur chlorine and phosphorus which results in severe tarnish in the oral, oral environment occludes large quantities of oxygen in molten state oxygen gas will evolve during the solidification resulting in the pits and the porosities so fusing temperature is 19 960.5 degrees celsius density is 10.4 gram per centimeter cube thermal coefficient of expansion is 19.7 into 10 raised to the power minus 6 per degree celsius modulus of elasticity is 120 gigapascal so coming on to the minor alloying elements iridium that is grain refining ruthenium that is also grain refining so coming on to the grain refining the addition of as little as 50 ppm that is 0.005% of iridium and ruthenium results in the 100 increase in the number of grains per unit volume increases the alloy's tensile strength and percent elongation by more than 30%. It increases the tarnish resistance, slightly increases the yield strength. Does not appreciable after hardness. so alloys for all metal restoration before coming to the alloys of uh, your all metal restorations i have some mcqs of your noble metal alloys which was asked in your previously each and pgi or you can say the aipg mcqs so first mcq is indium in the metal alloy i repeat indium in the metal alloy is responsible for the hardness of the metal ceramic it was there in your aipg exam second mcq softening heat treatment okay this will discuss later okay the pure as i've already told you that the purity of the gold is expressed in the fineness this already i have told you that according to next mcq according to ad specification number 5 the gold alloy used for casting contains 75% of precious metal so gold content in 18 carat gold is 75% your answer is 75% i repeat gold content in 18 carat gold is answer is 75% was asked in pgi exam next mcq percent of gold in high noble metal is more than 40% So next MCQ is which of the following gold alloy is used in fabrication of saddles bar crown and bridge your answer is type 4 next MCQ is for long span fixed dental processes flexure resistance is important what is important the flexure resistance is important next mcq to function satisfactory in the mouth alloys should be i repeat 
to function satisfactory in the mouth. Alloys should have the tensile strength of above 300 megapascal. Next MCQ, patient increase hardness, sorry, platinum increase hardness and elasticity of gold and increases the melting temperature of alloy. I repeat, the MCQ, platinum increases the hardness and elasticity of gold and increases the melting temperature of the alloy. I hope these all MCQs are clear to you. Please go through this once. Now coming on to the alloys for all metal restoration. These are high noble and noble metal alloys. That is your gold, silver, copper, palladium and your silver and palladium. Contains metal ceramic alloys and the base metal alloys. Starting with your gold silver copper palladium alloys primarily primarily ternary alloys of the gold silver and copper with a minor amount of platinum palladium and zirconium sorry a zinc Approximately more than 90% of the total alloy content is your gold, silver and palladium. So the composition of gold, silver, copper and palladium, gold having the tarnish and corrosion resistance. Tarnish is an inverse function of gold content. It contributes burnishability, ductility and ability to heat harden the alloy. Coming on to the silver, it helps in control the color of the alloy. Promotes ductility. Gold and copper alloys contain 75% of gold, break apart at a grain boundaries during heat treatment if no silver is present. Coming on to the platinum, it is very expensive ingredient as you all know. It contributes strength, whitens the alloy and increases the fusion fusing temperature coming on to the palladium like platinum but more ex effective and less expensive than platinum alloying metal of choice versus platinum copper principal hardener in the gold alloy is very important Concentration more than 12% of gold amount. Alloy can be heat treated. Concentration more than 18% that decreases the melting temperature of the alloy. When alloy with a silver, when alloyed with silver, Copper increases the alloy's hardness and decreases the melting point. Very important for the exam point of view. Copper imparts a reddish color to the metal and contributes most to the corrosion of the gold alloys. Silver and copper ratio is important to tarnish resistant but not as important as your silver and palladium ratio. Copper is not found in porcelain fused metal alloys due to its tendency to discolor the porcelain. Coming on to the zinc, it acts as an oxygen scavenger as I already told you in your previous topics. 1 to 2 percent helps to counteract the absorption of oxygen by silver. 
increases the castability, decreases the porosity and increases the hardness and brittleness of the alloy. These are the properties you have to remember because the question is only framed from the composition or you can say from the properties. Indium, tin and iron. These are the hard hard these hardens the alloy. Provide oxides for the ceramic bonding in PFM alloys. Iridium, ruthenium and rhenium. Grain refining. Gallium. These are added to a high palladium alloys or non-silver gold or palladium metal ceramic alloys to compensate for a decrease in the coefficient of thermal expansion which is caused by the elimination of the silver. They also provide oxides for ceramic bonding. Now your gold, silver, copper and palladium. palladium. So the main elements and the type of alloy so basically there are four types of alloys type 1 high noble that is gold based content you can say gold contains 83 percent copper 6 percent and your silver 10 palladium 0.5 and in this your tin indium your iron zinc and gallium these are balanced in the all four elements your these contents are balanced in a balanced state so in type 2 that is high noble gold base gold contains 77 percent copper 7 your silver 14 and palladium 1 now your type 3 has two parts high noble gold base that contains 75 percent of gold copper 9 silver 11 palladium 3.5 3b is your noble metal that is gold base this is your high noble metal which is gold base second is your noble which is gold base gold 46 percent contains copper 8 your silver 39 and palladium 6 coming on to the fourth that is high noble your gold base gold 56 copper 14 silver 25 palladium 4 these are the this is a very important composition you have to mark it up so these are the copper and gold percentage so high noble metal contains 7 percent high noble type 2 contains 9 percent 3a contains 12 percent 3b contains 17 percent Four con type 4 contains 25 percent so copper the concentration is more than 12 percent of gold con amount that is the alloy can be heat treated concentration you are more than 18 percent leads to decrease the melting temperature of the alloy so the type 1 and type 2 gold cannot be heat treated and have a higher melting temperature versus type 3 and type 4 this line is very important for your exam point of view please keep this in mind very important terminology very important topic that is softening heat treatment or solution heat treatment you can expect a question from your heat softening heat treatment and hard heat treatment so please remember the temperature and the time basically this line itself acts as an mcq which was been asked in your previously in aims exam so in this what is softening heat treatment in this your heat alloy is heated to 700 degrees celsius for 10 minutes and then it is quenched so I hope you all know what is quenching. Quenching it is a rapid cooling of a work piece in a water, oil or an air to obtain that properties. This is known as quenching. Soft heat treatment 
in this your the gold casting alloys can be placed in the soft condition by heating at 700 degree celsius for 10 minutes and then quench so which results in decreased in size strength proportional limit and hardness leads to increase in ductility and percent elongation modulus of elasticity not significantly altered can you see this your heat can be your alloy can be heated at 700 degrees celsius for 10 minutes these are indicated prior to adjusting and burnishing and in your polishing very important slide please take at least two to three minutes in for this slide and just read this once it is very important for your exam point of view you can expect a question from this topic second is this one is your softening heat treatment and it is your hardening heat treatment so in this the alloy is heated allowed to heat to 450 degrees celsius for two minutes and then it allowed to cool slowly to 250 degrees celsius over 30 minutes and after this process you need to quench or you can say you heat at 350 degrees celsius for 10 to 15 minutes and then you quench so what we get is it increases the strength the proportional limit and the hardness so basically the hardening heat treatment increases the strength the proportional limit and the hardness of the alloy decreases the ductility and the percent elongation so these basically these are indicated for your removable partial denture frameworks and long span FPD fixed partial dentures. Very important. Coming on to the silver palladium alloys. Silver ratio palladium. The ratio approximately is 3 is to 1. 3 is your silver and 1 is your palladium which contains 60 to 70 percent of the silver and 25 percent of palladium to render silver tarnish resistance in the oral cavity both the silver and the palladium absorbs gas during the heating and then results in the casting is very technique sensitive so palladium and gold alloys for PM, PFM restoration so this is the composition type 3 and type 4 alloy the main element is your silver base noble silver base noble silver base contains your type 3 contains silver 70 palladium 25 same way type 4 contains 45 your silver and 25 is your palladium So coming on to the alloy for PFM or the metal ceramic restoration that is your gold platinum palladium gold palladium and silver your palad uh, your golden palladium your palladium silver and high palladium also called no copper alloys so you can make the framework you can make the framework on the cars lead and results in the firing and what you get is a clean polished your alloys so some important requirements <coughs> it must have the potential to bond to the dental porcelain need oxide forming elements that is the small amount of base metals poses coefficient of thermal contraction compatible with those of dental porcelains sufficiently high solidus temperature that is the fusing temperature which 
is allowed to permit the application of low fusing porcelains. It is more than 100 degrees Celsius than the firing temperature of the ceramic. Ceramic metal bond. So typically the th coefficient of thermal expansion of porcelain is equal to 13.0 to 14.0 into 10 raised to the power minus 6 per degree Celsius and the metal is 13.5 to 14.5 into 10 raised to power minus 6 degree Celsius. So the difference of 0.5 into 10 raised to power minus 6 per degree Celsius causes the metal to contract slightly more than does the ceramic during the cooling after the firing of the porcelain. So basically this condition puts the ceramic under the slight residual compression which makes it less sensitive and to apply the tensile strength, tensile forces. So basically this is the diagram, it is the porcelain and it is the metal. This is your coefficient of thermal expansion of the porcelain, coefficient of thermal expansion of the metal and it, it is when you are this basically this diagram represents the ceramic metal bond. You can see the porcelain metal bond at the firing temperature and at the room temperature. The firing temperature at the room temperature. When the thermal of coefficient uh, coefficient of thermal expansion of the metal is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 into 10 raised to power minus 6, greater than ceramic, thus placing the ceramic in compression at a, a room temperature. See, can you see this? This is the firing temperature, this is the room temperature. Now read the diagram of the ceramic metal bond at the firing temperature and at the room temperature when the thermal of coefficient of expansion of the metal is 0 0.5 into 10 raised to power minus 6 that is greater than your ceramic. This one that greater than your ceramic. The coefficient of thermal expansion of your metal is greater than that of your ceramic. Thus, the placing the ceramic, placing the ceramic in compression at the room temperature. Can you see this? Compression at the room temperature, and it will make a bond. Coming on to the gold, platinum, palladium alloys. Coming on to the composition, gold contains 84 to 86 percent, platinum contains 4 to 10 percent, palladium 5 to 7 percent, silver 0 to 5 percent, your iron, indium, and your tin is 2 to 3 percent. High noble advantages are excellent bonding to porcelain, reproduces fine margins and occlusal details, easily finished and polished. Corrosion resistance and non-toxic, adequate yield strain and modules of elasticity in most of the cases. Coming on to disadvantages, low sag and creep resistant, not strong enough for long span FPDs, high cost. Coming on to the gold palladium and silver alloys composition. Gold contain 45 to 52 percent, palladium 26 to 31 percent, silver 6 to 16 percent, indium your 10 5 to 7 percent. High noble coming on to the advantages it has the higher melting range, better sag and creep resistance, higher yield strength and modulus of elasticity for long span FPDs, good castability easily finished and polished these are non-toxic and lower cost versus your gold platinum alloy and palladium alloys coming on to the disadvantages your silver may cause greening of porcelain white color may show through tissues as a gray 
and may not be acceptable as gold colors. High palladium content may increase the risk of hydrogen gas. Absorption during the casting and bonding of the porcelain may be affected by oxidizing procedure. Coming on to the golden palladium, which is very important. Coming on to the composition, gold contain 45 to 52 percent, palladium 38 to 45 percent, indium 8.5 percent, gallium 1.5 percent. High noble advantages are same as for your gold palladium and silver alloys with the addition of the potentially better porcelain color due to lack of silver disadvantages are same as that of your gold palladium and silver alloys with the exception of the porcelain greening coming on to the palladium and silver alloys composition palladium contains 53 to 88 percent your silver is 30 to 37 percent, indium is 4 to 7 percent, and tin is 4 to 7 percent. Noble metal advantages are high yield strength and modulus of elasticity, better sag and creep resistance, non toxic and low cost. Disadvantages are castability less than the gold alloys, very important. High silver pole leads to porcelain greening which decreases the bonding. High palladium increases the gas absorption and poor color. High palladium alloys. Composition palladium 74 to 88%, copper 10 to 15%, gallium 99%, your gold 0 to 2%. Cobalt is 4 to 5 percent, indium is 0 to 5 percent. See, the composition of the alloys are very tough and it is very confusing also. So, you have to mug it up or keep this in mind because the composition is very important and somewhere around it is confusing also. So, you can note it down, pause the slide and note it down. So that at the end of the movement or you can say at the last moment you can just read the composition thoroughly so coming on to the advantages high yield strength and the sag and the creep resistance non-toxic low cost castability is equal to cold alloys that is easy excellent porcelain color coming on to the disadvantages porcelain bond strength may be variable High palladium content leads to increase in the hydrogen gas absorption which leads to poor solid solderability. It can't be used with the carbon investments or crucibles. The carbon and the silicon contaminations will cause brittle castings which may crack or tear at green boundaries under the stress. So minor element in the PFM alloys, indium, your tin, your iron, gallium which provide metallic oxides for the porcelain bonding and harden the alloy. Gallium increases the thermal coefficient of expansion to compensate for decreased or absence of silver. Heat treatment. PFM alloys can be heat treated, however, clinical condition is dependent on the ceramic application. Okay, uh, before coming on to the base metal alloys, uh, let me tell you some important MCQs regarding your noble metal alloys. Okay, so reduction uh, yes your first mcq is softening heat treatment alloys increases your answer is ductibility so ductibility increases the softening heat treatment of the alloys the next question reduction in the fusing temp fusion temperature of the dental gold casting alloys is caused by the presence of 
your answer is copper so basically copper is the answer I repeat a reduction in the fusion temperature of dental gold casting alloys is caused by the presence of copper it was asked in your AIMS exam so I've already told you the purity of the gold is expressed in fineness and next MCQ I have already told you that according to AT specification number 5 gold alloy used for casting contains 75% of precious metal coming on to the next MCQ heat hardening is a process done at 25 degrees Celsius for 15 to 30 minutes told you already in this see in this see the hardening you can see the hardening heat treatment it is 250 degrees Celsius for your 15 to 30 minutes is the answer. I repeat the MCQ. Heat hardening is a process done at 250 degrees Celsius for 15 to 30 minutes. So next MCQ is gold content in 18 karat gold I have told you is 75%. I repeat gold content in 18 karat gold is 75% so percent of next is percent of gold in high noble metal is more than 40% I repeat percent of gold in high noble metal is more than 40% next MCQ is annealing is also known as your answer is soft hardening treatment it was asked in your AIMS exam. So plat next MCQ is platinum increases the hardness and elasticity of gold and increases the melting temperature of the alloy. Next MCQ, I've already told you for the long span fixed partial uh, fixed dental processes, your flexure resistance is important. Next MCQ is which of the following gold alloys is used in fabrications of saddles, bars, crown and bridges that is your answer is type 4 so I hope these noble metal alloys are clear to you now after this now after this coming on to the base metal alloys it is very important topic and it is very vast also number of question arise it's from this particular topic so base metal alloys these are nickel chromium cobalt chromium pure titanium and the titanium alloys so starting with the cobalt chromium and nickel chromium alloys this is the composition so chromium the percentage is 11 to 20 percent so chromium is responsible for tarnish and corrosion resistance due to its passivity as you all know what is passivity what is passivation so it is the formation of the protective oxide is the formation of protective oxide film by a reactive substance which prevents the corrosion and the further oxidation it is known as passivating effect so if more than 30 percent it is difficult to cast and brittle It, if it is more than 30 percent it is difficult to cast and it is brittle cobalt or nickel 765 to 78 percent 
Cobalt and nickel are pretty much interchangeable. Nickel alloys have decreased strength and hardness, modulus of elasticity and the fusing temperatures and increased ductility and percent elongation versus the cobalt alloys. It is a very important line that the nickel alloys have decreased strength, hardness, modulus of elasticity and fusing temperature and increase in ductility and percentage elongation. Minor alloying elements that controls the majority of the physical properties. That is the carbon which contains 0.1 to 0.5 percent increases the strength, hardness and brittleness increased by 0.2 percent and in this the alloy gets too hard and brittle for the dental use by decreasing 0.2 percent it decreases the yield strength and UTS to your unacceptable level. Now coming on to the molybdenum. See it is a very important topic because it is very you know confusing the composition because it contains your compositions so it is very confusing you should have a thorough knowledge about this you should read the slides at least two to three times then only and write it down in your uh, notebooks or in a piece of paper so that you can mug it up or you can easily remember the values so coming on to the so this line is very important that when you increase the carbon in the composition your alloys get too hard and it is brittle for dental use but when it is decreased by 0.2 percent it decreases the yield strength and UTS that is ultimate tensile strength to unacceptable levels coming on to the molybdenum which contains 3 to 6 percent it helps in increasing strength hardness and percentage elongation so aluminium the percentage is 4 to 5 percent it forms a nickel aluminium in nickel chromium alloys which contributes to precipitation hardening resulting in the increased tensile and the yield strength coming on to the beryllium 0.5 to 2 percent which decreases the fusing temperature by approx 100 degrees celsius important point increases the fu fluidity during the casting allows for electrolytic etching with resin bond prosthesis magnes 5 percent silicon 0.5 percent increases the fluidity and the castability of the molten alloy plus boron act as a deoxidizer which is essential in the nickel containing alloys iron and copper increases hardness heat treatment most desirable properties are in the are in the cast condition that is equal to no need for heat treatment these are the titanium and the titanium alloys as you all know titanium is a biocompatible material the best property of the titanium we use in the medical and the dental it's because of its biocompatible property so it forms a very stable oxide layer commercially pure titanium is used for the dental implant surface coating and crowns partial and complete denture and for the orthodontic wires so ti6al4v is most widely used so i'm telling you the mcq which was asked in your aims exam previously and the mcq was most commonly used titanium alloy for the dental 
and the medical purpose your answer is di titanium 6 al that is aluminium 4v that is vanadium titanium aluminium and vanadium it is very very important please keep this in mind coming on to the cast titanium the problems are high melting point that is 1700 degrees celsius chemical reactivity that reacts with the gaseous elements easily especially at the higher temperature more than 600 degrees celsius it needs a well controlled vacuum in processing the technology required makes the casting titanium so expensive now consideration on the properties the melting range the solidus or the liquidus ranges should be narrow to avoid having the alloy in the molten state or extended times during the casting so to decrease oxide and contamination liquidus temperature determines the burnout temperature the type of investment and the type of heat source very important point burnout temperature in the liquidus temperature is 500 degrees celsius burnout temperature if it is equal to more than 700 degrees celsius cannot use in the gypsum bonded investment very important line liquidus temperature base metal that is ranges from 1400 to 1500 degrees celsius versus the cast gold type 1 to 4 ranges from 800 to 1050 degrees celsius liquidus temperature less than 1100 degrees celsius leads to gas air torch more than 1100 degrees celsius leads to gas oxygen oxygen torch or you can say the electrical induction so solidus temperature is important to soldering and formation of ordered phases limit heating to 50 degrees celsius below the solidus temperature Coming on to the density, alloys with the high density will generally accelerate into the mold during casting faster and tend to form the complete casting more easily. So the base metal 7 to 8 gram per centimeter cubic versus your high noble that is 13 to 18 gram per cubic centimeter. So alloys with the lower density has the lighter alloys. Coming on to the yield strength, it can be increased with the treatment and changing the composition. Coming to the hardness, it is a good indicator of the ability of an alloy to resist local permanent deformation under the occlusion load. It gives some indication for the difficulty in polishing the alloy. So most noble casting alloys is less than enamel and less than base metal alloys. Coming on to the elongation fatigue, important property for RPD alloy. For crown and bridge applications, a low value of elongation for an alloy is not a big concern. However, the elongation will indicate if the alloy can be burnished. Coming on to the biocompatibility, noble alloys related to elemental release from the alloys, that is from the corrosion process. Base metal, beryllium from the contact dermatitis to severe chemical, your pneumonitis nickel sensitivity 5 to 10 times higher for females 5 to 8 times of females so this is the end of the dental casting alloy these are the uh, typical composition of your noble casting alloys you just go through it once these are the properties of elements in the dental casting alloys these are the physical and chemical properties of the severeness of the noble metal of the casting alloys. Chemical properties of the alloys used in the partial denture. So, 
you now I have some important MCQs as usual I'm gonna tell you just please note it down please write it down the MCQs from your base metal alloys number one MCQ was nitile alloy was asked in your previous examination so nitile alloys have shape memory your next MCQ was I have already told you most commonly used titanium alloy for the dental and the medical purposes TI6AL4V so cobalt and the chromium alloys contains 60% of the cobalt and 30% of the chromium this was asked in your AIPG and AIMS both exams I repeat the MCQ cobalt and the chromium alloys contain 60% of the cobalt and 30% of the chromium coming on to the next MCQ cleaning of the base metal alloys is done by your answer is sand blasting with aluminium oxide Coming on to the next MCQ, the main drawback of adding beryllium in the nickel chromium alloy leads to health hazard. Coming on to the next MCQ, your, the question was which of the following? So the cobalt and the chromium alloy exhibits the highest fatigue resistance. It is very important question asked twice in AIMS and twice in PGI and once in your EIPJ it is very important so I repeat the MCQ cobalt and the chromium alloys exhibit highest fatigue resistance next MCQ the percent of the percentage of noble metal in predominantly base metal alloys is less than your answer is is less than 25 percent so next MCQ in base metal alloys corrosion resistance occurs due to answer is passivity your yep. passivating property okay so next MCQ chromium added to steel does not decrease the elastic limit so your next MCQ is shape memory are seen is your answer is nitinol wire and related to this nickel though it is very small but it is very contains a number of mcqs nickel a question similar to this is in the patient with the allergy to costume jewelry what is contraindicated that is nickel and chromium is contraindicated one question one more mcq shape memory in the night eye is because of your answer is stress induced from austenite to martensite so this is all about your alloys so I hope it is clear you just go through the PPTs or you can just go through this lecture once because the num it has the alloys contains the number of compositions the number of functions so you have to keep this in mind and uh, you have definitely I am telling you you have one to two not even one to two you have two to three questions at least two to three questions from this particular topic it is very important for your exam point of view thank you so much